Barkov, under sky blue skies, starts to wake. Who are we? Peaceful people with fierce pride. We shape, we make, we give more than we take. From the shadows, we find light. Coventry, the ninth largest city in England, titled UK City of Culture 2021 and 2017. Known for its history, award-winning universities and attractions. With crime rates at their highest in Coventry, I would like to research into crime and who commits it. Coventry has a population of approximately 350,000 and a workforce of 225,000. It is an ethnically diverse city with over 30% of its population coming from ethnic minority backgrounds. Coventry is also home to two large universities, the University of Coventry and the University of Warwickshire. With recent statistics stating that Coventry is the seventh most dangerous city in Europe, I would like to find out why is this and who and why do the people of Coventry commit crime? I will be researching into the different social inequalities people face, including age, gender, ethnicity, locality and social class, to see if any of these are the reasons why people commit crime. Firstly, I will be researching into ethnic minorities and whether they are treated differently in society, which may lead to them committing crime. With recent statistics showing that black people are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched, I wanted to find out how much this shocked people. I asked people how shocked they were that black people are seven times more likely to be stopped and searched. Survey results show that only 34% of people were shocked at the statistic. This leaves me with the question, are people normalised with institutional racism, racism embedded in the police force, and has this type of unfair treatment become the norm? Could black people being labelled as criminals by the police and society lead to the self-fulfilling prophecy, meaning that they would live up to that label that the police and society has given them? Statistics show that black people are more likely to be working class, meaning they are more likely to suffer from relative deprivation. With them also being labelled, they might think, well, I'm being labelled anyway, so I may as well do it. Could this be a reason ethnic minorities are overrepresented in prisons? With 5% of the population being black and only 2% being Asian, would this be the reason arrest figures show that 16% are black and 7% are Asian? But surely middle class people commit crime. Why are crime rates so low in rural areas? Could it be because of white collar crime? White collar crime is crime committed by middle class individuals and is not recorded in official statistics. With white collar crime being known as a dark figure, could this be the reason crime rates are so low in rural areas? Next, I wanted to research into who commits crime and the reasoning through the mind of a police officer who deals with crime day in and day out of his job. I arranged to meet PC Cray Taylor, who has been part of the West Midlands Police Force for over 10 years. Hiya, yeah. um, I'm PC Taylor, Cray Taylor, stationed at Coventry Central Police Station. Um, been a police officer for 17, 17 years in March, um, 10 years on response, um, 7 years in, in force context. Okay, so ethnic minorities such as Afro-Caribbeans are more likely to be working class, meaning they could suffer from relative deprivation. Would you agree that relative deprivation is the main cause of crime? I'd say it's a massive cause of crime, yeah. Um, I think not just people from ethnic minorities, white people, um, Asian, black people, people from any walk of life, if they're brought up in, in, in poverty, then there's a... I'd say that there's a chance they're going to turn to crime. Yeah, because it, uh, I wouldn't say it's the main cause that they call, they turn to crime, but, but it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a contribu contributory factor. Yeah. Okay. So statistics show that more men than women commit crime. Why do you think this is? I think, yeah, I think it depends on the type of crime as well. Yeah. Um, I think uh, offences against the persons uh, have always been mainly committed by men. Yeah. 
there have there have been uh, instances where women have committed offences against the person. Yeah, so it is rising but, at the moment where because yeah. of uh, there's a thing called the Ladette culture, which means that women are starting because of the shift in opinions on genders in society. Women yeah. are starting to act more like lads. They're starting to drink more. Yeah, and things like that. That's why the arrest figures are going up uh, yeah. for women. I'd say so. Um, Not all crimes are recorded in official statistics. There are many reasons for this, such as charges being dropped, loyalty to the criminal. Um, these are just examples of why they're not uh, recorded in, in official statistics. Hmm. From your experience, are there any other reasons why these charges may be dropped? I think um, the main reason uh, that, that charges are dropped is um, lack of evidence. Um, that is the, the, the biggest stumble, stumbling block here in many an investigation. You know, the police can can bring a case to the CPS. Yeah. Obviously, if there's not enough evidence there, the CPS won't win it. So yeah. um, there's also fear, uh, the fear factor. So what do you mean by the fear factor? The, you know, going to court, giving evidence yeah. against the um, the criminal, the criminal yeah. in question. So that's, if if they're scared, there's a chance that they're, they're not going to go to court. Some sociologists would say that crime is good in society because it creates uh, a boundary maintenance. So it shows. It tells us what is right from wrong. It tells us that these people have done that. That's wrong, and they've gone to jail. We shouldn't do that. Mm. Um, what do you think about this? Do you think do you agree with that? That we kind of need crime in society to be able to know right from wrong, or what? Uh, what do you think? I, I'm not a sociologist. Um, however, I would uh, disagree with that massively. Uh, being a police officer, I would say for every crime that's committed. There's a victim of crime. Yeah. Uh, it's the reason why I do the job uh, is to try and stop that victim of crime having the repercussions uh, or dealing with the crime that's been committed. So I don't think there's anything good that can come out of a crime that's been yeah. committed. Okay. Um, that's my personal opinion anyway. People also say that crime encourages adaptation to change. Um, how far would you agree with this? That we need crime to adapt to change? No, I don't think we need it to um, adapt and change. I think um, I think it's going to happen and I think we, we, we need to understand it. I think we need to, we don't need it to happen. Obviously, I don't think anyone needs crime, but I yeah. think um, we need it to, we need to understand why it's happening. Yeah, um, okay. Because nine times out of 10, there's some social issues behind it. Yeah. So and we need to understand what they are and, and, um, and be able to deal with them. I feel from a very young age, boys especially are socialised to be tough and to play fight and then are shocked when these norms and values that they have grown up with do not work in the real world. I feel the rise of female offenders is rising because of people's attitudes to women are changing. In the past, male judges and police officers have been more lenient on women as they are seen as a more vulnerable sex. However, with times changing and equal treatment being enforced within courts and police officers, more women are now being included in official statistics regarding crime. I'm hoping this documentary has opened a few minds and has changed some stereotypical views when it comes to crime and who commits it. Maybe you won't be the person to label someone in association to crime and maybe look into the reasons why people commit crime before labelling. Them, as you can see the effects that it may have on that individual.